In 2001, I was a junior in high school. At that time, I was serving an operational tour with Headquarters Second Air Force. I was the Human Resources Director for a manufacturing company in Birmingham. 2001, I was actually in the middle of a um, of traveling around the world, trying to just traveling and teaching English. I was between um, the Czech Republic and moving to Korea. So the morning, um, I was uh, with a friend of mine. We were running team over into Georgia to recover a truck and trailer. I believe that day was a Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we had met early for, you know, physical training or PT session. Around that time of the year, we were getting ready to do annual reviews and wage increases for our employees. Drove to school just like any normal high school student. Uh, spoke to friends, had a, you know, had a good time before, you know, your first period started. When I was woken up in the middle of the night by some new friends who lived across the hall from me, and they were pulling me out of, out of the room saying I need to go and watch their television because I hadn't even bought a television yet for my own room. Shortly after we got back to the duty section, we began to hear some scuttlebutt, uh, some chatter that we've had some security breaches somewhere along the eastern part of the country. The teacher at the time, she received a phone call uh, and was told to come outside in the hallway. And all of the teachers were in the hallway. And some, all of a sudden, you could see people started crying. Somewhere around 8.30, quarter to 9, then sort of the reality of the situation begins to set in as we got feed through some of our intel briefings that the first plane had struck the first tower. And obviously within the next 45 minutes to an hour, things just sort of went south from there. Uh, we turned on the AM FM radio, we was trying to listen in, find out what was going on. And that's when we first started hearing about the very first plane that hit. It really didn't sink in that this was real. Um, and it took me quite a while, at least at least a couple of minutes to to really for it to sink in that this was real. My husband had called to let me know that he himself had watched on the news that the second plane had went in to the tower. A lot of people were like kind of didn't believe, you know, what was happening, what was going on. Uh, but then they rolled in a TV like a TV with the uh, fat back. They rolled in the TV and, uh, and you could see the destruction that was happening in New York. And people just, like you could hear a pin drop. Obviously at that point in time, you know, the, the base is scrambling. Your threat conditions raise from a casual threat, if you will, to a very imminent threat. On the radio, you know, they're talking about there's more and more and more planes out there. Um, you don't know where they're going, um, what is the plan, um, what is happening to our country. I went to class um, and my students started telling me more of the story because, of course, most of the television we could watch and the newspapers and everything else was in Korean. And so I didn't really have a full understanding of what had happened until I was teaching in front of my class. Um, needless to say, it was a very emotional experience. What was pretty eerie about that day is, is by lunchtime, if you will, you know, you look up, you typically see lots of commercial uh, airliners. There was nothing in the sky. You could see it, we could see it on some of the um, communications that we had, but literally the only aircraft that was in the sky at lunchtime that day was POTUS. We had called in to work, make sure everything was okay at work, and. You know, it kind of stunned us both. We were both veterans, so it, it really affected us quite a bit. And we had a classmate uh, in there, and we knew his mom worked at the Pentagon. I had a cousin who was living in Manhattan at the time of the, the attack, so I was very worried about his well-being as well. Just before this happened, we had found out my father-in-law was in very critical uh, health issues, and uh, it we were already pretty well, you know, stunned and dealing with a lot of issues, you know, personal life. And then when this happened, it really, it, it just, you didn't know what to do, you didn't know what to say. It was um, a lot of things went through our mind. I was able to get a call to my wife. It was about probably 15, 20 seconds, but it was a very quick. 
hey, go get our daughter. She was going to a middle school not far from the base. You can't really explain to them what's happening, but they're beginning to see the feeds too from the you know, local news channels. But I basically told her to turn that off, get in the car, because she had to go outside the wire, if you will, outside the gate to get to our child. So once she got our, our daughter and came back in, it wasn't long after that that the base completely locked down. Listening to the radio and getting home and talking to my husband and, and the fact I couldn't wait to get home and see my children. Um, but driving home, I thought, how many of those people got up that morning to go to work, to do their job, got on a plane maybe just to go on a vacation or um, just do what they had to do that day and they didn't get to go back home. And I thought about that. I couldn't wait to get home to be with my children. What is one thing from 9-11 that you will probably never forget from that Probably two things. Um, I think the initial briefing that we got from our, our two-star general uh, General Regney, just understanding that someone, it was unthinkable that the Pentagon could be attacked. Um, and then, you know, honestly, uh, is the call to my wife. I don't want anyone to forget the sacrifices that people made in order to try to pick America back up. And I know a lot of lives were lost. People in the buildings, people in planes, you have um, other members that you know, fought as the plane was going down, you know, so you don't want to forget them. It was amazing to me to watch the class come together around, around us. Uh, there were several of us that were American teachers over there, um, and all of the students really came together around us and, and were incredibly supportive. Um, you know, it made me understand just how similar cultures are around the world. My mother also passed away on 9-11, 2019. So I wear this pendant on that day in her remembrance because she would wear it every September the 11th um, in remembrance of um, all those who perished on that day. A lot of innocent lives were lost that day. Um, it affected all of us as Americans and that we should always remember this day and never forget. The thing that I took away that was most important was that the, the way people come together is so similar across cultures and across, uh, across oceans. You know, people tend to have a very human reaction to tragedy. The compassion that even my year one students who basically only knew how to say hello showed to me um, was, was just phenomenal and I will never forget that. There were human lives taken, not just Americans, but there were lots of lives taken from different countries. We're all humans, so I believe that was just a horrible day, um, not just for America, for all human mankind.